Hey guys, so Heidi here with Successful Fashion Designer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to draw a technical fashion flat on the iPad with Illustrator. Now, I'm using a pencil, an external pencil. It's a generic pencil, it's about $25. I'll link to it below. I don't have the Apple Pencil because I'm not really a hand sketcher and so I don't see myself using this tool a ton. So I opted for the $25 version instead of the $100 Apple version. Uh, I'm gonna show you how the pencil tool works in the iPad and why you might like it for a little bit more of an organic hand-drawn feel. I'm also gonna show you a really powerful mirror tool that we do not see on the desktop version of Illustrator, but is on the iPad version. I'm very excited to show you guys this robust feature. I also hope they bring it to the desktop version. Uh, beyond that, make sure you stay until the end where I'm gonna give you my full review on whether or not I think you can use the iPad version of Illustrator to draw your fashion flats versus using Illustrator on the desktop. In case you're wondering, I'm using an older iPad. It's the sixth generation. This is our personal iPad that we use just to watch TV at home. It's a 9.7 inch screen. It's not one of the fancy new versions of the iPad and it works fine. So don't feel like you need to have a really fancy version to do the design work using Illustrator on the iPad. All right, let's jump in and draw a fashion flat. I want to preface this with I am not a hand sketcher, <laughs> um, although I am going to use the pencil tool specifically, not the pen tool. I personally am finding that the pen tool, um, for my workflow at least, I'm fighting with it a lot. And I think that one of the values of working on the iPad for Illustrator is the ability to sketch by hand. So we're going to go that route and we're going to do it by tracing a little kid's jogger. So I'm going to start off by locking that. And I'm gonna grab my pencil tool. And I will grab a nice bright colored stroke. And let's just check my properties because I was, okay, one point solid. Okay, that looks good. So let me just undo that. Okay, so Let's start by just outlining the basic sketch. And this is gonna be a little bit more organic and freeform than a technical flat might be. Um, that's because we're using the pencil tool and that's okay. Um, it's really more to kind of just get you familiar with some of these tools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by drawing at the center back and I'm just gonna kind of draw the left hand side, a little bit of that to kickstart us. Um, one thing I do want to show you is the settings for the pencil tool. You have this option to adjust the smoothness over on the bottom left here. And I have found that about a smoothness of three for this specific sketch is working really well. So I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so we're going to start at the center back. And I'm just going to draw kind of a little bit organic here. So that there's some texture where the waistband is gathered. I'm gonna pick up right where I left off and this side seam can come down very, very smoothly. Arguably I can zoom out a little bit more to do the rest of that. And then I'll zoom in to do a little bit more texture on the cuff where we also have the elastic, right? Nothing major, but just a little bit. Okay. Now before we go anything any further, I want to show you this feature over here on our repeat menu. So we have a radial repeat where we can repeat things around a circle. I've showed that in some other videos. We also have a grid repeat, which is essentially creating a uh, repeating pattern tile um, on a grid. And we also have a mirror. So this is very, very cool. I'm going to choose the mirror option. You can see it just mirrors it right away. We have a lot of flexibility in here in terms of we can rotate the mirror. So if you're doing something a little bit more artistic, that might be something you want to play with. As far as a fashion flat goes, you're probably just going to keep it at a perfectly straight reflection here. You have the ability to change that angle as well. You can also adjust the spacing in the center. Again, for the fashion flat, we're going to just leave it sort of butting up right against the center because that's how it would be in reality. Um, so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to double click. So I am kind of, I didn't want to double click to get to direct, to direct selection. Let me click out of this. Okay, here we go. So you can see I just have the main object, uh, the, the whole sketch selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click. 
to get inside of that artwork that I'm drawing so that it continues to mirror for me. Um, I'm gonna give you a full disclaimer that I'm fighting with this a little bit and I haven't been able to find a tutorial that really shows me uh, how to stay inside of the mirror. Um, but you'll notice as I draw, it's gonna be hard to see because my hand, but this inseam on the right is gonna keep going as I draw the inseam on the left. So let's, it should, yeah, there we go. Okay. I'm trying to do this so that you can see, right? Okay, so we get that to meet at the crotch point. Um, from there, let's go ahead and draw the other parts of the waistband. So this is where I struggle a little bit. I'm wanting to disconnect from that path so I can draw a new path with the pencil tool, but then I have to double click to get back inside. And I think I was playing around and I couldn't get it to stick but I think that there is a way to do it with the modifier key. So let's, let's play around with that as we draw. Okay, so there's that part of the waistband. And again, you can see it reflected and it drew that side as I did that. Um, that end edit ended a little bit wonky. I'm not gonna fix that detail right now because it's just gonna take too much time. Um, and so I want to disconnect from that. So what I want to do is I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key. Yes, that is what it is. Okay. So this little modifier key here that I just did, and I thought that's what it was. Um, right here, it's Shift. If I slide out to that second bubble, it's the Option or Alt key. And so what I did was I slid out to grab the Option or Alt key, and then I can draw a new path. Uh, I just need to hold it for a second though, otherwise it's gonna make the path, the pencil, a hard line. Okay, I got it. I'm pretty sure I've got it. But now I think I lost my reflection, I did. When you do undo, it seems to pull you out of the reflection. Um, again, this could be operator error. This could be just how it's set up to work right now and maybe um, I just don't know some of the tricks. So I'm gonna grab my pencil tool and let's start drawing some of the gathering that we see in the waistband here. So what I actually want to do is I'm just going to draw one little piece. I'm going to come over to my properties panel and I'm going to change that to be 0.5 so it's a little bit more fine and I also want it to have a round uh, butt and round corners. So from here, let's keep going. I'll close that so we can see a little bit. And you can see it's drawing all of these for me on both sides of the sketch, which is nice. Um, sometimes when your gathering is mirrored perfectly, it can look a little bit weird, but what we can do is we can expand it and come back later to change that up a little bit so it's not a perfect symmetrical gather because that just sometimes looks a little bit awkward especially right at the point where it meets at the center front um, I don't know if you've ever sort of tried to reflect the gathering and had it kind of do that and so we will fix that later but for now we're just kind of trying to get the sketch filled in and I'm not spending a ton of time to make sure this looks perfect I just kind of want to get through it for the demo for you guys but you can see it drew all of that at the same time and again, I can come into the center back and draw a little bit of gathering too. I've gotta to be careful though that it doesn't do what it just did where it joined those two points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo that, but now I'm out of the mirror. So get back into the mirror and I'm gonna draw. Now it selected that main path, which means it brought me back to, let me try that again. There we go, I want that attribute, I want half point stroke weight. Okay, so see I'm just kind of learning a little bit as we go, which is fine. Um, I've probably only spent about an hour, maybe a little bit more playing around with Illustrator on the iPad to be totally honest with you. So I'm still learning and finding my way. I'm gonna just leave some of those even though they're not great. All right, let's zoom out. And we will, we can draw our pocket 
I'm just gonna draw that like that. Done and done. I'm not, whoops, I'm not gonna draw the seam there because we only want that once, so we'll draw that at the end, but we would wanna draw the detail on the cuff, right? So we'd have, I think we have stitching there. I don't think it's set on. Um, I'll change that to stitching in a little bit. And then we've got our gathers, right? Because we've got an elastic cuff here. So again, just doing this kind of quickly. And again, I wanna check, yes, we're still mirroring, okay. I haven't figured out yet how to just tell while I'm drawing if I'm in the mirror or I'm not. It seems to look the same. So that is tripping me up a little bit, I won't lie. Okay, so, wah, I keep getting to my main iPad. I'm, again, I'm still learning here. So some of the gestures are, are new to me and that's fine. Okay, so I think we probably have it good enough um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this artwork and it's still tied to the mirror. Meaning if I wanted to change anything in the mirror, whoops, that's the image and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. If I wanted to change anything on the right hand side independent of the left, I can't because it's still dynamically this mirrored artwork. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna come over to my object expand option, right? So we expand many things on the desktop version and same here, we wanna expand this. Now when it expands it, it automatically groups it. And so what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna ungroup it. It also gives us a clipping mask on top of each side, the right side and the left side. I don't totally know why, although some of the desktop interface works like this as well. So I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool. I'm gonna grab this clipping mask, which is essentially a bounding box that encapsulates the entire section of the right-hand side of the artwork. And I'm just gonna delete, delete, delete. And I'm gonna do the same for the mask over on this side. Where is it? There we go, I'm gonna select the whole thing and then I'm just gonna select one. Come on, I just want that one anchor point. Whoops. There we go. Delete, delete. Okay, now what I've got is the artwork in its entirety. And so if I wanted to come back and make some of these uh, gathering movement lines a little bit different so they don't look so awkward in the center front, I could. The one thing that I definitely wanna do though to actually complete the flat is I wanna join some anchor points. So I'm using my direct selection tool specifically. Um, and just like we do on the desktop, I'm just clicking to drag and select those two specific anchor points. Now this little dialog that comes up here, I'm gonna choose the option to join. And this one got a little wonky, right? So I'm actually gonna delete that. Delete. And then, whoops, oh, I think we just have, no, I think we should be fine. Yep, there we go, join. And we'll just select those two and we'll join. And then I think I just have to join the two at the crotch. Yep, okay. Now, um, and those were overlapping a little bit, so we got that funky result. Okay, so I just moved one of those a little bit over. It's not super, super accurate or perfect. Okay, but now what we have is we have one continuous path for the entire outline of our object. And so what I can do from here is give this a fill color. Now the stacking order, we have to play with that because we lost some of the gathers, so that's fine. Um, what I'm going to do is come over here and I'm gonna ungroup this. There we go, so now I have the pants alone. And we use this layers option to change the stacking order. Now I did that really quickly, I actually didn't mean to. So let's take a look at this. I can click this once and then change the stacking order using this little slider, or I can just click this and drag to change the stacking order. Now I wanna bring it all the way to the back so you can see the gathers start to come back. It's really, really faint because they're subtle on my screen. Um, but let me show you a little bit more visibly, right? So we can see by changing this slider here, I'm changing the stacking order. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna do, just because it's really hard on the eyes, is I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna change the stroke color to black. 
Ah, much easier to look at, right? Okay, so a couple things. I have got to add one little gather um, to this center front right here. It's like making me nuts. Okay, so I'm gonna add that one and I'm gonna add that one. Okay, that just softened that a little bit. The other thing that I wanna do that's driving me a little bit crazy is that this path is a little bit thin. And so I'm gonna come over to my properties panel and I want this to be one point, not point five. Um, and I want to do the same thing for the other pocket. So I'll show you there is a way to use an eyedropper tool, although unless there's a trick I'm missing, I'm finding it to be a bit tedious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, whoops, I'll use the direct selection tool. Select that path here, come over to my scissor. Oh, and it doesn't even let me do it with the direct selection tool. Okay, so that's fine. Grab that path, come over to here, copy the appearance, now I'm going to deselect, I'm going to grab this path, come over here, paste, it's not even letting me do it. I did it earlier. Okay, so let's see, do, 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 copy appearance. Hmm. I'm not sure why that's actually happening, to be honest with you. So that's all right, we will just go, it was working earlier, it's probably an operator error. Okay, so there's my path. Um, so the last thing that I would do is I would draw this path here for the crotch seam. And then we had a drawstring, so you could draw that. You could do that with the blob brush, although just heads up, if you do it with the blob brush, it's going to be um, a fill color, not a stroke. But that's okay, that might work just fine for you. So we're just I'm just gonna draw this really rough. And that doesn't look so good. I think I needed to make this, the size a lot bigger. So maybe instead of one, we'll do a 16, which is quite large. All right, so what did you guys think of that? My personal opinion on is the iPad the best tool for drawing fashion flats. I really don't think so. Now, I say that with a little bit of bias because I am not a hand sketcher. Drawing by hand actually feels really awkward to me. I think I'd have to practice for a long time to get comfortable with it. I actually, you're gonna die, but I actually draw with the trackpad, not even a mouse. Um, that's the most comfortable way for me to draw my flats. That being said, if you're more comfortable with pen and paper, then this could be a great tool for you. However, drawing technical fashion flats in a hand-drawn feel, to me, feels really awkward. Maybe there's some of you out there that feel otherwise, but they're so structured and detailed that I think it's a challenge. Beyond that, right now as it stands, the software Illustrator on the iPad is very robust for fashion. However, it's still missing some essential tools. I'm sure they're gonna be slowly released, but for now we don't have things like brushes. So as I was drawing all those little gathers on the waistband, it's very tedious. That's something that we would create as a brush on the desktop and draw it in a few seconds and then recycle it over and over. So I think we're still lacking some fundamental features. That being said, if you're drawing really organic things, maybe like ruffles or some frills, then I think that this could be a great tool to add to your arsenal. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe here on YouTube so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. I'd also love to share tons of tips, tutorials, and freebies that you don't see here on YouTube. So sign up for my email list to get those at successfulfashiondesigner.com. I also hang out on Instagram at so Heidi, so check me out there. And I'd love to hear from you guys below. What do you think about Illustrator on the iPad? What questions do you have? I'd love to hear those in the comments.